Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to Big Monday. The topic today is uh, th what the differences are in some of the self-shielded wires. Basically, a self-shielded wire uh, and a flux cord wire that's gas shielded. In fact, we've even had questions, can I use gas with, a, with my self-shielded wire? And of course, the answer is you can, but it doesn't do you any good. Uh, we want to discuss a little bit of what, what's the reason for the existence of a gas shielded cord wire. And kind of in a nutshell, well, what we're going to do is we're going to weld with some, and you can watch us make a weld with that, pay attention to the smoke level, the spatter level, the ease of slag removal, and things like that, uh, because the gas-shielded cord wire is, has a big advantage over the self-shielded wire in those respects. Uh, the self-shielded wire, of course, it has many advantages as well on its own because of the fact it's more portable. You don't have to haul a gas bottle around. You can weld outside. You don't have to worry about air currents and air movement. So there's pros and cons of both. But I guess the thing to really kind of bear in mind is that the, the cord wire that's gas shielded is mostly intended, that's a, more of an industrial usage wire. Uh, basically, uh, the, the core material is not just designed to shield the molten puddle like it is with self-shielded wire. Um, that, that's why you have to use gas, because in a cord wire that's gas shielded, that those core ingredients are devoted more towards uh, mechanical properties, uh, higher deposition rates, things of that nature. So it, because there's not much stuff in there to shield the weld, hence you need the, the gas shielding just like you do with MIG. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a weld, uh, pay attention to the amount of slag that we have, the, the, uh, or the ease of slag removal, the amount of spatter, and also the amount of smoke uh, that appears with each weld. All right? So the first one we're going to do is the, is the gas shielded uh, weld, or 035 uh, cord wire gas shielded. Then this gas that we're using, uh, typically with those wires, you can use either C, uh, regular CO2 or C25, you know, 75 argon, 25 CO2. And that's, that's the one we're using in our demonstration. Okay, so let me get this changed over and we'll make a weld and we'll start our comparison. All right, that's the weld with the flux cord with gas. And now give me a few minutes, I'm gonna change the machine over and we're gonna do a weld with flux cord without gas. And then we can make a comparison about the smoke levels and spatter levels and all that. Uh, the one thing to bear in mind is they're both 035 wire that we're gonna be using, but because they're a whole different process, gas shielded versus self shielded, the parameters that I'm going to use are going to be different. In our past comparisons, we always use the same wire feed speed, the same voltage. Uh, we're not going to be able to do that in this type of a comparison because of the difference in process. So anyway, let me get it changed over and I'll be right back. Okay, now we're going to start doing some welding. All right, there you have it. Two different welds, two different products. Each very strong in its intended usage. The one over here, that's the uh, gas shielded flux cord. 
And you know, it's known by different trade names, dual shield or outer shield, depending on the manufacturer. Um, but you see, it's, it's basically a higher deposition wire, better mechanical properties, the ability to go out of position uh, because of the uh, slag coverage that you get uh, that kind of helps hold the molten metal in place while it solidifies. But it does require the gas shielding because the core material doesn't really give you any protection from the atmosphere in this particular product. So you do have the, just like MIG, you have to have a gas bottle, you have to worry about air movement and things of that nature. Over here, inner shield, you can see it's quite a bit of spatter. Not as good a deposition rate as the, as the gas shielded flux cord, but very strong when you have to worry about working outside in the wind, construction sites, uh, building superstructures, uh, things of that nature. Uh, you, it's really a hard product to beat in that type of application. Uh, you probably during the course of the welding, you notice that the, the uh, self-shielded wire also produces a good bit more smoke which means if you are going to use it inside, you have to be a lot more concerned about ventilation and smoke exhaust and stuff than you would have to be with, with this product or even with uh, MIG welding. Uh, you never want to breathe the smoke anyway, but there's just way more of it with this product, so it becomes an even greater concern. So, but there you have it. Two products, very good in its intended usage. Uh, there's a little bit of crossover. It's just a matter of you making a decision of which works better for you. The, one thing I probably should mention, as far as I know, the gas shielded cord wire isn't available in the small two pound spools that we buy at Home Depot and other places like that uh, because it is intended mostly for industrial usage. So it's, you know, the, the, basically the 10 pound spool is the, fall, the smallest package size that you can find uh, of the gas shielded wires. So anyway, uh, hope you learned something there and we'll see you next time on MIG Monday. Take care. Well, if you learned something today or like what you saw, please feel free to subscribe and keep an eye out for new episodes every MIG Monday.